Now before assembly, there's an important step. Um, I'm gonna make sure my jig is square. So this is what I was talking about with uh, squaring up your jig. I found a piece that was off enough to make me want to remove the whole piece, get it nice and square, and then tack it back in. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm using just one of the long tubes. We know that these rails are the reference for flat bottom. And I've got my jig piece clamped to it. I welded on these on the back so it's nice and flush and square with it gonna slide it into place exactly where it should be and that way I know that the floor is going to be perfectly square it should be in a half an inch gap right in here so I'm gonna set that and I'm gonna weld it back in and then I can build the floor and I know it's perfectly square All right, the main floor is all welded up. Uh, I know you saw me with the hand file on the grinder, um, meticulously making every part fit. This is the one of the primary parts of this. So it needs to be perfectly square, it needs to be fit up well, it needs to be welded well, because everything attaches to this bar. Now you saw me flip it. Now when you're using a jig and you have it in the jig like that, the only way to make sure it's square is to flip it. That means the front and back aren't crooked. That means the side to side are perfectly in line. Uh, you saw me using clamps. I ended up welding these blocks onto the side instead of clamping them for that specific reason. Um, I'm, a, I'm kind of a methodical guy and that's kind of what it takes to build these is that it, it's not a snap tight kit. It is a fabrication. So doing the floor first, learning how to make things square, along with meticulously fitting joints, not only gives you a good base to work from, but it also sets the tone and the standard for the rest of the pieces and how they're gonna go on. All right, the next piece is the main roll bar or main hoop. And uh, I purposely, underbent this piece um, because this is a hard one. There's four bends and if you don't nail the bends then the whole thing is off even if one bend is a degree off. It's not gonna line up correctly. So I underbent two of the pieces by one degree to show you how to align parts to make them work. All right so you can see when I put this on, it's about an inch to an inch and a half off of either side. So if you're one to two degrees off, it can affect it at the bottom. So you gotta come up with ways to make it fit correctly onto what you're building. And I'll show you that. All right, so I've got this in place. I've got the, uh, the strap on, but I haven't tightened anything yet. Uh, this is very close to center. And as you can see, this side is lined up. So what I'm gonna do, since it's sitting flush in the jig and sitting flush with the rail, I'm gonna take a measurement and measure this, match up the other side, crank this together, and tack everything up.
All right, it's all squared up. Uh, the connection point to the side rails are equal distant from this front tube, but since this is a jig, you can use any point. Uh, the top is centered, and all took with some cargo straps and a little bit of dedication, and a tube that was not bent perfectly is now completely square on the assembly. Alright, next on the list is the uh, front windshield slash hood. I honestly have no idea what to name this, so that's the name it got. Uh, this was assembled in the previous previous one, and it just sits in there, gets centered up. Boom. Alright, next up are the A-pillars. Now the way this goes in is this stays level, this stays centered, this stays centered. Uh, this joint goes right at the apex of this turn. So where this sits is where it gets tacked. And then you match the other side, check your cross members, everything is just getting tacked. I welded the floor together because it's done. We're not going to have to disassemble it to change anything. It's completely squared with the jig. But some of the uprights, you tack them in. You build the rest of it, and if you need to adjust something, you pop it loose, adjust it, tack it back in. And then once you have every piece in place all tacked, then you do your final welding on your whole chassis. That's how I like to clean up my edges. I like to put a nice chamfer right on the edge all the way around. That gives a really nice channel for welding and you've got to clean off all the thin parts. This whole ear right here is just thin metal. If you tried to weld that, it would break off. So when you're doing your trimming, trim it down to at least the width of, or the wall of the tube, and uh, clean off all these burlies, make for a nice clean edge. Now what I ended up doing to get these eight pillars in place, since I don't have anybody here to hold this for me, and I couldn't, my magnets wouldn't work because they would rotate out, is um, the picture shows that it clearly, this point mounts at the center of this bend, right? So that is a solid reference point. You can see the center of a bend. So since I don't have anybody to hold me, I, I lined up the tube right at that point, mid-bend, and I put one small tack on the outside edge so that way I could move the tube around, I could twist it a little bit, I had some maneuverability with it to, to get this level, to get this squared, and to find a common point. As this rotates, these are gonna choose different points on the side rails. So if this is square or centered, this is flat, uh, this is straight and square, these are going to have the same point on the back because it all lines up. Now, something else you can do is use the cross members to align everything. Um, the rear cross member goes just above, if you look at the picture, it goes just above, like at where this pipe or bend starts to go straight towards the roof, and this one sits at the center of the bend. So you put both those in place, you measure the angle of it from the ground, since we're working for a jig, and when that angle matches, it's in the right place. So if those four points line up and the angle is straight, then you put these pieces in the right place. It's that easy. I designed the chassis that way to make it easier for assembly. If the right is squared to the left and the cross member lines up, then the whole frame stays square. And the order of building uh, reflects using those cross members to help align things. Alright, if you look at the diagram and on your master parts list, part C44 is your main floor cross member. So this piece has an exact width between these two floor rails, and since you use the jig to assemble it, this piece will fit here, and since it's a cross member, it should fit snugly. Um, but you can make a second one of these, 
and trim it down a little tight or shorter and use it as a reference. So if you have two points across from each other, you can line it up, you could put a square on it, and if that's square where those two points meet, then the whole assembly is square. All right, so I just put in the roof rails. Obviously, they're just squared and look good. Um, they just have a light tack on them because the rear uprights are going to be the deciding factor of where this line is. Next piece are the lower A-arm attachment bars, okay? Now, these pieces on the bottom were used on the jig to help align this. Now this needs to be perfectly square with each other and perfectly spaced apart. All right, I don't know if you could see in the time lapse of exactly what I did, um, but like I said, this front end has to be square. We know the jig is squared and these two rails are actually boxed, whereas the front piece coming off of it is just a single post that we squared the best we could. And this has a notch in it. So these were sitting in to the rails just fine, but I, I couldn't get the front bar low enough in this notch to get these bars lined up. That was like just a eighth to a quarter inch of a gap and I was trying to figure out a way just to get this down so it would lay in these pieces and I was either going to take all this apart and trim this down by an eighth of an inch or straighten up the edges um, so what I ended up doing was just knocking it out laying this down on these two and everything is completely square in the front end these are cradled nicely right in that notch All right, so the next steps involve the forward uprights, which, which go in here, and then your upper A-arm attachments connect to it. But there's a jig included in the instructions to square all four of these pieces up so that your A-arms have the correct geometry. Now, since this is still in the jig, and we can't put the A-arm alignment jig on here, I'm gonna skip this for now, and I'm gonna put the, uh, the next two steps, which is the rear uprights on, and then we can pull this out of the jig and really start having some fun. All right, so now the com time has come to put up the rear uprights. These are those big multi-bend pieces, and you can see they should line up on the outside of this axis right here. Um, once we get both of these on, we can square all of this up, Pack it together and then pull it out of the jig. Now, you remember the crazy piece we had to cut with the two holes in it? I'm gonna take all this, I'm gonna get it cleaned up. I'm gonna slide these on to the rear uprights prior to mounting it on here. That way everything's nice and square and strong when we weld it up. All right, here's the fun part. If these were notched correctly, they should slide right onto these rear uprights. And it will act as a jig to hold these at the perfect separation while you put them on there. See how strong that is? All right, the good news is, is all the hard parts done. The outside pieces, including these, the floor, and the front end, 
are all the hardest pieces because that is the triangle. Strongest shape is a triangle. So this is just a modified triangle. Um, every piece leans on another piece when it's stressed. So that's what makes it strong. Now, it just gets easier and more fun from here. Um, now I'm going to go back to the previous steps of the forward uprights and the upper A arm attachment bars. And now we can take it off the jig. We don't need the jig anymore. 